inner circle will come to order. Lady Roberts, come forward. All right, where am I? And what are you going to do with me? Report on Miss Roberts. Lady Roberts, madam of an exclusive house of pleasure in Los Angeles, used her girls to obtain information on wealthy foreign guests in order to set up burglaries. Okay, so what do you want from me? Who are you guys? We represent a higher law, Miss Roberts, and one that might be able to expunge your criminal charges in return for absolute obedience to this body. I will do anything. Your plea has been accepted. But remember, Miss Roberts, you will be required to repay your debt tonight. But what is it I am supposed to do? Our you business is concluded. Return to I your workstations. is duller than a Methodist quilting bee. So why are you endorsing Monroe anyway? Well, a wink is as good as a nod to a blind man. When are you going to come and work on my paper? I have no interest in working on your newspaper, Grandpa. You're as pig-headed as your mother. I might be. Working for the DA's office. Why hold the balance of justice when with a thumb you can push it down? Would you like to know why, Grandfather? Mm-hmm. Because they let me carry a gun. A gun? <laughs> well, if you wear an outfit like that, you better keep it handy, right? Jason. Yeah. Congratulations. I saw where you and the Post won another award. Well, My rag can't even get a sniff of local corruption. You've got to tell me your secret. Well, you give me a fulcrum, a place to stand, a long enough pole, and I will move the world. Right. Phil, is it my imagination or is Carr getting more eccentric? Oh, he's gotten so far out there that he delivers mail by space shuttle. <laughs> Still, last couple of years, his papers scooped AP, UPI, and Reuters on at least four major stories. <laughs> Let's not forget who runs his paper. And the old man is barely around. Jason, can I speak with you for a moment? Not a chance. Job. Maybe you can catch the next space show. Uh-huh. Oh, good luck, sir. Bill! Uh -huh. Bill! Uh -huh. I thought you'd never get here. I thought thank I'd you. have to raise all this money without you. How am I going to be able to legally thank you? You don't have to do a thing. It's as simple as that. Now, if you would excuse me, all these charming people want a piece of you. Yes, indeed. Thank you. Hi. Henry, you there? No, I was just checking the kitchen area for security, sir. Keeping an eye open for, um, Billbridge. We're going out. You'll be wanting the limousine, sir. No, no, no. Prepare the Carmelian for action. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Are you aware that you have 200 guests, sir? Henry, can justice celebrate while evil prevails? I suppose not, sir. Tonight will be a milestone. Yes, sir. Ryan. 
Paraclete of justice must hasten to the fore. Yes, sir. I hope this means we're going to kick tail tonight. You better believe it. Get ready at once. Yes. Good evening, Desert Palm Sanitarium. How may we help you? This is Jason Carr. Let me speak to my granddaughter. Tell me a little more about this phobia of being home alone. I know it's silly, I but whenever I'm, I'm alone in, in, in the house, I'm just certain that somebody's going to break in and murder me. I notice here on your records that your mother died when you were five. Your house must have seemed very empty and frightening with her gone. So you very well may associate an empty house with death. I never thought of that. <laughs> Excuse me, but they're putting an important phone call through to you, Shelley. Oh, thank you so much. Looks like our time is up for today. <laughs> she did any more insight than my last three shrinks combined. <laughs> thank you, Doctor. You're welcome. Bye-bye. What's your problem? Give me the lab coat back. Oh, but Bob, isn't role playing an essential part of the coping mechanism of a no, healthy psyche? Shelly, you've got to stop talking to me as if we were colleagues. You're my patient. The smock, please. Right on, right on. No, 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 no. You can't do that. You what? can't do that. You said to give Never mind back. what I said. You know, Shelly, checking yourself into this place was the wisest thing you could have done. Especially after what that philandering husband, Philip, did to you. My ex-husband, Philip. <coughs> There's nothing in the world wrong with you that a little take-charge toughness wouldn't cure. There's nothing wrong with me, then? Then I guess you won't be charging me. Hello? Shelly, is that you? <gasps> Grandpa! Oh, I was just wishing you were here. You know, I think I got things pretty well straightened out here. Why don't we shoot for your birthday next week? That would be the greatest present you could give me. Is everything all right? Well, it will be when you're here. I'll see you on my birthday, huh? Bye. Ready when you are, sir. Fine, Henry, fine. Is everything all right, sir? Well, I worry about Shelley, you know. I was just talking to her. She'll be home next week. Oh, but that's wonderful, sir. She's such a spirited girl. Yes, but I'm worried that she inherited her mother's southern belle frailty. Oh, I am. Um, I wouldn't worry about that, sir. She comes from... Solid car stock. Just like yourself. Maybe you're right, Henry. She'll just have to learn to adapt to this peculiar world, just as I have. We're off! No question about that. Is the Carmelian ready? Oh, no, there is a bit of a problem, there, sir. Problem? What kind of a problem? I'm told that the Viper weapon system still hasn't been tested. They will have to use the old standby. Well, perhaps if you could postpone for a little, it will give us a chance to... Uh... Henry, can we afford to flag before the forces of evil are in full retreat? Well, of course not, sir. We launch at once. Launch at once, indeed. We're so far off the map now, we're already halfway to the boat. them delving into your past and our work. But what about you, sir? I don't think I should leave you. You've got no choice. Leave now before you ruin everything. Now, that's an order. Go! After the dude on the bike, go ahead! Step out of the side car. Do you know who you're talking to? Just get out of the car. Come on, 
Let's go. We don't have all day. What the hell is going on here? Oh, it's just a little surprise, Mr. Carr. Looks like you're all dressed up and ready to party. What the Oh! The lamb is led to slaughter. The wolf commands the door. The paraclete of justice will ride again no more. How's that again? In a bizarre twist of events, death tonight claimed one of the city's most respected citizens. Jason Gerald Carr, celebrated owner of the Los Angeles Post, the apparent victim of a heart attack. Thanks, Dan, for that live report. Jason Carr's body was apparently found at a private club that caters to the fantasies of upscale men. The owner of the Los Angeles Post has been a maverick fixture in this city's society for more than half a century. In recent years, Carr was often portrayed as a charming eccentric. His death tonight does nothing to dispel that notion. Now, adding to the mystery of his death are rumors that Carr might have been wearing some sort of superhero costume. It's anybody's guess what that costume may have represented. Now, let's go to Sandy with a beach ring. Turn them all off! Levels those people will sink to. People, let's listen up. I want a special edition. The Triumphs 40 Years of Service to This City by Jason Carr. I want photographs with every president dating back to Roosevelt. And I don't want a single reference to the sort of innuendo that we just heard. Is that clear? So let's go to it. We have a lot of work ahead of us tonight. <laughs> Mr. Branscombe, how about a little celebration over at my place? Our troubles are over. Miss Rogers, our troubles are just beginning. The king is dead. The court jester now owns this paper. Therefore, do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And lastly, in a final farewell to this mortal tabernacle, Jason's last wishes were that his World War II buddy, an attorney and lifelong friend, Alex Manning, come and read some of his final statements, especially prepared for his friends on this solemn occasion. A corpse is a corpse, of course, of course, and no one can talk to a corpse, of course. That is, of course, unless the corpse is the famous Mr. Carr. <laughs> to all of you who behold the light, may the paraclete of justice relieve himself on thine enemies. Amen. Come on. Now stop that. Grandpa wouldn't approve. You always made him laugh. I was the one in charge of tears, remember? No. no. Things are changed, don't they? Yeah. I mean, look at you. You're all self-controlled and perfect. And look at me. We can't possibly be cousins. Now stop that kind of talk. Do you want to turn this into a funeral? My goodness, look at you. Who's been taking care of you since you traded me in for Philip? It wasn't a trade. It was a swindle. Oh, I miss Grandpa so much. Don't you worry. We'll get through it together, just like when we were little. <laughs> I'm still little. <laughs> Shelley. Jessica. Oh, Uncle Alex. Hi, Uncle Alex. My two favorite princesses. Thank you. Jason left me some strict instructions for you. Now, I am to deliver into your safekeeping something very mysterious. Mysterious? What is it, Uncle Alex? It's a journal of some kind. Jason was very secretive and very urgent about it. But I'm supposed to be leaving tomorrow on my fishing expedition. So if either of you could meet me this afternoon at his office, then I can open the safe and I can give it to you. Secret journal, Alex? That sounds like one of Grandfather's eccentric jokes. No, no. This is one of his eccentric jokes. He got me drunk in vanilla. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Grandpa was serious about this journal, I can meet you, let's say, around 5 o'clock. Fine. Okay. Fine. Mm. I'll catch up to you a little later, okay? okay. Oh, Jessica! Have a moment? No. Look, I want you to know that this tragedy is leaving you in a... A time of need where you're not going to have anyone to look after your financial interest in the paper. <laughs> I want you to know that I'm the logical choice, and I'd be glad to help out. Philip, not if you were the last egg-sucking ferret on this planet. 
How'd it go? Oh, she's on the fence. Shelly, your grandfather was a real friend to me. It was really his endorsement that put us over the top. Now, if there's anything I can ever do as mayor, I just want Henry. you to let me know. Thank you so much. Henry, it's time for the tall timbers of the family to stand together. Remember Shelly's fragile state of mind. Not a word to her about how her grandfather died. Not a word, sir. Outstanding. Shelly, uh, I was thinking... Well, that during this time of despair, you might need someone to stay with you in that big, empty mansion. Oh, Philip, you just read my mind. I've been longing for another physical presence in that big house. A warm body to snuggle up next to me. A familiar face on the pillow when I wake up. I can be there inside of an hour. Oh, that would be just great. I can't wait to see Brutus again. Brutus? Yes, the sweetest little creature in the whole world. Oh, I can tell you're upset at having to give him back. How is he? Fine, fine. Well, I run a major newspaper. I should be capable of handling one canine house guest. <laughs> Hit it, Henry. Dropping to your knees might have gotten more attention closer to the grave. Shut up, Andrea, and move it. Move it? Yes. Where should I move to wherever you chose to board that stupid mud of hers. Now, what kennel did you use? None of them. If the bag bit me, I had him put to sleep. What? My God, you knew that was Shelly's dog! <laughs> you did this deliberately just to cause problems between us, didn't you? Philip, just don't have a cow. I'll send Wendy out to find a dog that looks exactly like it. You had better. Because if you don't, your only job at the paper will be delivering it. Is that clear? Wendy? What are you blubbering about? The death of Mr. Carr. Well, you pick a hell of a time to think about that. Now blow your nose and get your butt in gear. You've got an assignment. my keys in the garage. I better go back and get them. All right, who are you? And why are you wearing wood paneling? And what are you doing in my grandfather's safe? Please be calm. I can explain. We can just explain it to the police. No, 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 please. I, I won't hurt you. Now, after you've heard what I have to say, you can call the police if you wish. Is that fair? Well, I'm not real sure. I work for your grandfather. And I'm here to retrieve his secret journal. How do you know about my grandfather's journal? Oh, I know about it because I helped him live it. I'm hoping he'll tell me how he died. He died of a heart attack. No. No? He died in bed with some sleazy hooker. My grandfather w died in bed with a sleazy hooker? That's what the authorities think, but I don't believe it because he was with me. My grandfather was in bed with you. That's even more disgusting. No, not in bed with me. With me on my motorcycle. Wait, Jason Carr was ripping around with you on a motorcycle? Now, why would he do that? Because we were... Because we were crime fighters. He was a crime fighter with you on a motorcycle. Not just a crime fighter. The crime fighter. He was a beacon of justice whose courageous actions helped cut through all the moral miasma which permeates this city. Oh, so he was a beacon of justice on a motorcycle. Don't you see? Well, we had to take the motorcycle. The Carmelian isn't ready yet. Oh, there's something wrong with the Viper weapon system. Mission can be postponed. He was right, of course, because the police stopped us. Oh, good. Well, then the police were involved, so let's just call them. No. Hey. You promised. You said you'd listen. Mr. Manning. Mm. We'd like to talk to you. What about? I'm concerned that evidence affecting a current investigation could fall into improper hands. What does that have to do with me? Mr. Manning, we know all about the journal. And if you don't mind, we're going to go along with you and see that it's properly secured. Well, I do mind. And unless you can tell me what this is all about. I told you what it's all about. 
official police business. That's enough. I'm afraid it isn't. Hey, 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 hey. Gentlemen, please. Stand aside. Hey, you got hurt me. Well. Mr. Manning, Mr. Manning. How did you plan on getting into your client's safe? Huh? Huh? An old guy like you would have to have a combination on you somewhere, don't you think? Either you release me, or you're gonna find yourself off this city's police force by morning. You know, I think you're getting a little too smart for your own good. Let's take him to the car. I have an appointment in this building. Don't worry. We'll keep it for you, okay? All right, if you and Grandpa were friends, then why can't we call the police? Because I risk my neck coming up here tonight to find out who murdered your grandfather. Murdered my grandfather? Oh, now you've done it. This is a silent alarm, Bilby. Up here momentarily, there's no reason to panic. Wait, what are you... Put me down! Wait, if you are who you say you are, you're gonna put me down. You know, this is exactly like a man. There's only one way out. No, see, you're just letting your feelings of frustration lead you to acts we're both gonna regret, especially me. I can't stand heights. Damn, the police. I'll have to jump. No! Uh, what, have you lost your mind? What are you talking about? This is a 40-story building. What, what are you doing putting on this... Taking this whole cape and leotard thing much too seriously. It is serious. Very serious. Now, listen to me. If you loved your grandfather, ah! it's gonna be up to you to rescue that journal. And when you have it, don't show it to anyone. Okay, but... Now remember, don't trust anyone. Well, it's good if the police are here. Then we could just tell them what happened to my grandfather and... <laughs> seems to be the trouble here. It was just awful. He jumped. Who jumped? Well, that he had the, um, the, it was this man and he was trying to get into my grandfather's safe. Did he get it open? No. Can you describe the man? No. The, well, the, um, it was dark. Listen, just try very hard, all right? Shelly! Excuse me. Yes. Shelly, are you all right? Yes. <laughs> Policeman said you found an intruder. Yes, I did. We couldn't find a cell, Lieutenant, and nobody got bias. So if anybody was up there, he had to have wings. Shelly, where is this man now? He jumped. He jumped? Yes. This is a 40-story building. Maybe I should uh, just gather up my men and... Uh... Excellent suggestion, Lieutenant. Many thanks to the Chief. It's a fine job. All right, everybody out. Fun's over. Hey, buy a cup of coffee. Donut. Yeah. Shelly. Now come with you guys. I thought things were going to be back to normal. You promised. Oh, is that how it's gonna be? You're just simply just gonna dismiss things because of the past? Shelly, there are thousands of employees here that are dependent on sound day-to-day -day judgment. We cannot have people in the wheelhouse doing things to jeopardize that confidence. Oh, you're not saying I have a problem in my wheelhouse. You're saying that I have bats in my belfry. And if that's the kind of respect that I'm going to get around here, I will take myself elsewhere. Shelly, Shelly! Shelly? Wait, now that's just... Uh, Shelly, are you okay? What's going on oh, here? Oh, fine. Philip, do you want to tell me what's going on around here? I'll let her tell you. Well, what is it? Well, where the hell's the journal? It's still in the safe. The cops all over the place. We're gonna have to wait. No, no, we can't do that. We just have to come back. We're not gonna sit here with the old duffel while cops are crawling all over. All he has to do is shoot off his mouth. Look, I am no longer interested in pressing charges. I can see you two are under extraordinary pressures. <laughs> if you'll just let me go, you have my word. I'll forget the whole thing. You know, we'd really like to do that, Pop. I mean that. I really would. Do 
Just tell me what else this burglar said to you. Oh, he said the reason behind grandfather's death was found in this journal thing. I don't understand why Uncle Alex didn't show up. He said he was going fishing tomorrow. Yeah, but Uncle Alex is almost as absent-minded as grandfather. Don't put too much stock in all this secret journal and homicide business. I'm afraid your burglar is what we commonly refer to as a grave robber. A grave robber? Yeah, these guys, they read the obituaries, and then they wait for the funeral announcements, and they take that time to knock over the estate. Oh, Jessica, I think you've gotten way too cynical. So you're used to dealing with real tacky people in your job. Well, why don't you give me one good reason why you believe this burglar? Well, he had these incredibly blue eyes. Oh, Shelley, what do incredibly blue eyes have to do with truthfulness? You're right. So when he said that grandfather died in bed with a hooker, he was lying. He wasn't lying? The inner circle will come to order. Alex Manning, you have been found guilty of obstructing this council. Unless you cooperate, you will be condemned to die. Sorry, I'm too old to trade my life for anything as valuable as a friendship. Please remove him from this world. This meeting is adjourned. There you go, miss. That'll be all. Well, you have a nice day night here. Thank you. The paraclete of justice. What's a paraclete? I found him. I found Brutus. Wendy. You did understand that what we were talking about was a live dog. Yeah, it's Brutus. The man you told to put him to sleep, he liked him so much he kept him. Can you believe it? Why not? Look who owns this paper. Come on, Brutus. Come on. Say hi to Miss Rogers. No, no Wendy, no. Get, get out of here. Call the fire department. Wendy, get that dog out of here. There you are, passion flower. What on earth are you doing in your grandfather's office all alone? I'm just... What do we have there? <laughs> Remembered his shots. Oh. Oh. oh my God! He devoured her. Oh. No, I think she's hiding in the closet. Come here, Brutus. Come here, boy. Come. Wendy, tell maintenance the light in the supply closet is burned out. Right away, Miss Rogers. Oh, I am so sorry. And Brutus is such a gentle dog. I don't know why he went after you. Maybe he just likes the taste of reptiles. I meant the alligator shoes. Shelly, hey, what's this that you're holding here? I'm not holding anything, Philip. Come on, Bruce. That's the journal she took out of the safe. Or the paraclete of justice? Good heavens, madam. What, what on earth are you talking about? I don't know, but I have a feeling that this journal is going to prove that Granddad's death was an act of murder. Parked on the lot when they opened up this morning. The DMV verifies the owner as Alex Manning. No sign of him anywhere. Well, a guy with Alex's money would have probably gone fishing on a private boat. Well, so far there's no sign of foul play. I'm sure he'll turn up. Yeah. Okay, my 
Mike 20 in position. I'll go in as soon as it's dark. My sojourn as the parakeet of justice began when a scrap of brown paper found its way to my office at the post. It had come from a distant island and contained a brief but heartfelt plea for assistance from a young man forced into prison. prison. When I read it, I realized what my new mission in life was to be, a defender of justice and an enemy of tyranny. Decoying a guard, utilizing a dummy fashioned out of debris, he escaped across the island to chance upon my fishing boat. I had no idea when I pulled Ryan from the water that I had found my most faithful companion and had begun the most exciting chapter of my life. Our escape from the substandard nuclear plant was among, was among us. most dangerous. We were a scant few feet from disaster. But once again, the forces of good were well served that night by Captain Chameleon and the Parakeet of Justice. The guards are coming, sir. Yeah, they're not going to catch us tonight. Thanks to your special bag of tricks. In the days ahead, we would take on the forces of evil wherever we found them. No adversary too numerous, no evil force too great to stay us from our destiny to battle men of hate. No wicked deed nor criminal could elude our condemnation from those who assault the least of us to those who'd attack our nation. Thus I, the parakeet of justice, do sally forth to battle the demons of the day, the wicked knights of evil, who would destroy the American way. Oh my gosh. My grandfather's crazier than I am. Find Henry. Watched up everything. To the shame of it all. My father and his father before him would roll over in their graves if they knew. It's all. Henry? Oh, good, there you are. I've been looking all over for you. I really need to talk. Oh, Henry, what are you doing? Well, I'm. I'm... You're drinking. I'm inventorying the wine. For your inheritance tax, madam? Yes, well, you've inventoried quite enough. Come, I've got to talk to you. Madam, let me save you. I, I'm already aware of my fate. What fate is that, Henry? Being fired. Well, I've had time to deliberate the matter long and hard, and it's clearly my fault that your grandfather's no, dead. I should never have let him run off on those no, bizarre missions. Those it was my missions. duty to protect him. Was your duty I should be the first Bolingbrook in three it generations to let a car go down in flames. Well, they. All right. Put the bottle down. No. Come with me. No, no, no. Bolingbrook has ever been fired. Oh. I should be the first. Yes. If you answer my questions truthfully, I may give you another chance. Oh, oh, Miss Carr, if you trust me, I'll be the most loyal employee you ever saw. I know you will. Now, I know that people say that and don't mean it, but I do. I know you do. From this moment on, consider me your slave. Yes, I do. No request shall be denied while I have breath in my body. Now, please ask me for something. Yes. Something big. Tell me what you know about Ryan Delaney. Ask me for something else. Oh, Henry. I want to know where Ryan Delaney is right now. What is it, Brutus? What have you found, boy? A two, Brutus? Oh, no. Madam, madam, I really don't think that this is a very good idea. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's all true. In my grandfather's journal. Oh. My grandfather was living a comic book. Henry! Yes, madam. I'm coming. Henry, where is he? He? Captain Chameleon and the Paraclete of Justice. One is dead and the other's obviously hiding. Not hiding. Preparing. Oh, oh madam. Madam, I'm, I'm again, I've been against the whole thing from the beginning. Oh, I'm... it's all true. You and my grandfather running around like... Ding, bat, and boy wonder. Actually, the costumes and vehicles represent a fortune your grandfather spent on incredibly good crime fighting. I'm not fighting. interested in any more of this role-playing, you see. You've seen the last of the weak, waffling, indecisive Shelley. From now on, I'm going to be more like Jessica. I'm going to be strong and forthright and assertive. And I'm going to take over this investigation if 
You know, if that's all right with you guys. Oh, absolutely not. I'm going to find your grandfather's killers, but not with you in my way. Come on, Brutus. Oh, I see. Then I guess you know about the last entry of the journal. <clears throat> I've changed my mind. We'll be a team. Now, what about the journal? This power thing just works. Shelly, journal. Oh, um, well, in the final entry, they allude to a very high council that is corrupt in the government. I mean, mm. there was no one my grandfather could trust. Then we'll have to go alone, do things Jason's way. This way. In the final days of Jason Carr's life, he dedicated vast resources to the ultimate weapon to combat crime. He named it the Carmelian. Oh, for goodness sake, madam, don't be seduced by his beauty. Don't you worry, Henry. If this is the kind of off-the-wall thinking that got my grandfather killed, this is not for us. Nothing could be so special about this car that would be worth the risk. Now, we will not play games. We will not fall victim to my grandfather's foolish dreams. From now on, we're going to have to surround ourselves with sane, sensible tools of law enforcement. Strongly put, madam. What's the next move? We should call my cousin Jessica in the district attorney's office and just tell her everything we've learned. Magnificent idea. A disaster. Your cousin's plugged into all the channels monitored by the killers. Well, they'd know every move we made. Well, then what do you suggest we do? That he get a help. We must first prove Jason was murdered. It means going to the morgue, prove the autopsy was doctored. The morgue? I'm prepared to go alone. Hey, I am in charge here, remember? <laughs> of course. OK, but no Carmelian machine. This will be a sensible feet on the ground operation. Is that understood? Understood. Come on, Henry. Sorry, though. Somehow, I can't help but feel we're missing out on something very special. Hmm. We agree that I'm in charge here, right? Completely. I go in, I ask for the autopsy report, straightforward, no nonsense. Right. Okay, then what's in the bag and why do you have the harness around your legs? Because while you're going in the front door getting the runaround on a laundered report... I'll be getting a laundered report? I'll be sneaking in the back way getting the real thing. Now, was that my original plan? Of course. Right. Just as long as I'm in charge here. Completely and forcefully. Get the night attendant out of there long enough for me to get in, get the file, and get out. Okay, no problem. Shelly. Yes, yes. You can't flake out on me. Oh, there's no problem. Okay. How are you going to get up that high, though? You learn to do a lot of things on the run. <sighs> the least favorite part of my job, the morgue. Well, ID the body will be out here in five minutes. Okay, here we go. Wait! What? Just one question. Well, let's hear it. Well, how long could you hang up there if you had to? Why, are you having second thoughts? No, I was just wondering how long you could hang in, in case I couldn't get rid of the guy as quickly as we planned. Well, in that case, I'd probably come down with a severe case of cement poisoning. Uh, oh, no, no, no. But then don't you worry, no problem here. You just consider that man gone. Look, I'm just a poor working girl, and I'm going to lose my job at the paper if I don't get to talk to the doctor who did the autopsy on Jason Carr. I handled the case personally, but the paperwork isn't done. Oh, surely you can give me a general picture of things over a cup of tea. Won't take but five minutes. I have a priority autopsy to perform. You'll have to come back. Okay, that's it, Dr. Strand. 
I'm going to cut the doe-eyed cub reporter bit and go straight for the jugular. My name is Shelly Carr, and I'm prepared to seek an exhumation order for Jason Carr. Now, do we talk or what? Very well. Ask all the questions you like. But you'll have to do it while I work. Work? What do you mean by work? I told you. The autopsy? Follow me. Let's go. I'm no stranger to medicine. How bad could this be? <laughs> Begin with a lazy S incision. The saw makes a lot of noise. I'll be able to hear you better if you stand a little closer. The subject is a Caucasian, approximately 65, thought to have fallen off a fishing boat. As you will see, the subject apparently fell victim to shark feeding frenzy. Course he isn't with me. I knew perfectly well that he was with, with you, madam. I thought for sure he'd come down. No, I haven't seen him. It's about time you showed up. We're out of trouble. I got it. No, they left, but I'll be waiting for them when they come back. All right. The most important thing is to stay one step ahead of these guys. Now, they're after the journal and everyone who knows about it. You're trembling. I'm really scared, Ryan. It was horrible seeing Uncle Alex there in the morgue. I really don't think I can go through with this. Hey, it's too late to stop now. Well, you'll be okay. I'll look after you. Shelly, is that you? It's Jessica. Okay, we've got to tell her about Uncle Alex. No, no. She can't, she can't know about me. I'm a fugitive. She's an officer of the court. She'd be obligated to turn me in. Promise me, not a word. Well, hi, Jessica. Hi, Shelly. Did I hear voices? No. Oh, you know what you heard? I was doing some of my silly role playing. One of them was definitely male. Oh, you know why? Because I was doing Rapunzel, you know, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. This was much deeper. Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your golden hair. OK, I didn't want to have to tell you this, but you gave me no choice. I'm 
a channeler. Shelly? I'm a cross-dressing channeler. Stop it, Shelly. Now, where would I hide a charming baritone voice? Hi. You're burglar, right? Yeah. Yeah, I thought I recognized the eyes. Okay, we can explain all of this. Good, then start by telling me where you were at 8 o'clock tonight. Well, we really can't discuss that. Yes, we can. Somebody took a shot at me before he jumped out the window. What? You got... Are you okay? I'm fine. But Brutus has a crease across his head that makes him look like a Sharpe. Brutus! He's fine. The vet says he's fine. No thanks to the human fly. Actually, isn't jumping off buildings a page out of your book? You're not accusing me, I hope. Ryan worked with Grandfather. It's all in the journal. Well, where's the journal? Oh, Lord, the journal! Shelly, where are you going? Oh, no, Ryan, they took the journal. It's gone. There goes only proof. It's not the only proof. This is Grandfather's autopsy report, Shelly. And this is the original, not a copy. How did you get this? Well, let's just say it was an anonymous, but a highly placed source. Did either of you two look at this thing? This says the grandfather's system was as clean as a whistle. Precisely the problem. No trace of any drugs. But according to Shelley, your grandfather was required to take a blood thinner every day. And that's not all. I saw Uncle Alex at the morgue. It was a shark attack. It was just awful. Somebody is playing real hardball here, and this is nothing for amateurs to get mixed up in. I hope you understand that. But Ryan says we cannot go through regular channels. And why is that, Ryan? Jason Carr was murdered because he discovered a conspiracy that may well have infiltrated every segment of city government. Well, he suspected the police, and we discovered tonight that the coroner's office is also involved. Yes, we did. All right, well, that's all the more reason why you two shouldn't get involved in this. Now, Shelley, you promise me you consider yourself under house arrest until you hear from me. Okay. Doing nothing while there are criminals at large is abhorrent to every fiber in my body. Yeah, mine too. Abhorrent's better than dead. Well, now that's true. Jessica, this conspiracy theory is just a little far-fetched. Really? Did you know that Jason's attorney, Alex Manning, is lying in the city morgue right now? And are you trying to tell me he was murdered too? Well, they're calling it a fishing accident, a very convenient accident. Alex is fishing, but he's saying he never showed up for the fishing trip, just as he never showed up for his appointment the night before with Shelley. And this nest of demons is all detailed in your grandfather's journal, right? Yes. Well, then why didn't you bring this evidence with you? Because it's missing. Missing. But you read it with your own eyes, right? Actually, my cousin Shelley told me about it. Shelley. Well, in all due respect, that explains a lot. You know what rumors like this could do to me on election eve? I'm not going to tear apart my administration because of some flimsy evidence like this. You're a lawyer and a good one. You know better. Well, you know, I guess I'd take the same position if I was in your place. I just think you would have come out a lot better if you'd worked with me. Keeping late hours? Don't ever do that to me again. What is this? There's a file on Jason Carr's death. I don't see any kind of interview in there with the only witness, Laney Roberts. Mr. Carr was a friend of the mayor's. And word came down to go easy on the hooker angle. Do you get the picture? So does that mean you buried the file or you didn't interview her? Don't you understand English? What it means is that there is no case, and that is straight from the chief. And this is straight from the DA's office. Either you have that interview on my desk by the end of today, or I'll haul you in front of a grand jury. Shelly, it's me. What'd you find out? There's no way that Alex's death was an accident. I located one of his fishing partners. He never showed up for the trip. So they killed Uncle Alex, too? Yes, and he only knew of the journal's existence. So you're in even more danger because you've read it. Now, you mustn't leave under any circumstances until I can get some protection out there. Do you understand what I'm telling you, Shelly? It's very clear. Thank you. Jessica seems certain that Alex's death was murder. They're covering their tracks. I can't simply wait around until they make the next move. No, no, Jessica's going to send for help. <sighs> Shelly, they've gone from stealing the journal to killing off all the witnesses. Lainey Roberts is the only one left. 
I have to get to her before they do. I do not understand why the big hurry. We gave the old man the needle. It is over. It is done with. And I did what I was told to do. People asking questions. It's bad to beg you not be around. Save it, Philip. I want to know about the undercover story you did in the brothel where Jason died. What was his personal operation? What was the accident? Personal, if you get my drift. It's so like you to think like that. Well, he was no stranger to women. Often married, as you might recall. Two wives, Philip. And as I recall, you took three women on your honeymoon? A secretary and her assistant. This is a worldwide operation, my dear. As much as we all like to play, the news does not stop while we honeymoon. Well, if you'd stopped playing long enough to kiss the bride, it would have been news. Wendy, huh? I got a special assignment. <laughs> me? Come on. It's exciting. <laughs> Why me? You worked on the brothel story for my grandfather, right? Right. Look, I just want to know all the people from the newspaper who know the inner workings of the Rod and Saddle Club. What for? Doesn't it strike you as an awful coincidence that Jason was in a place under investigation when he died? Well, if you ask me, he used our research for his personal reasons. It was Jason who killed the story and never did explain why. All right, it's the dog or me. I give up. Which one are you? Honey, you may own a piddly amount of stock, but you have no authority here, and neither does Shelley. Now, what's she doing with one of my reporters? What are you talking about? She's back at the castle. My ass. Assignment desk. She just left with Wendy. Thanks, Andrea. My pleasure, Jessica. I love a good cat. <laughs> She's up to something. Yeah, no kidding. Skywatch. There's a white convertible leaving this building. I want it followed. Where are you going? To cover a great disaster. I hope. Slept around like some two-bit hooker. Now, where are we going and what the hell airport is supposed to be out here? Calm down. The council thought it'd be best if you left us by train. What are you guys talking about? There's no train station out here. Don't be, honey. We gotta get through this. So just tell us what to expect. Okay. The Rod and Saddle is a fantasy club, and it's strictly for, like, the sports car and limousine clientele. And it's all supposedly on the up and up, but everyone knows what goes on in the private chambers. And Grandpa had the paper checking this place out for a story? Well, they were doing a story, but it never ran. Jason was investigating payoffs to corrupt city officials. And, and anyway, I was in charge of approaching these two girls to help cooperate with the story, and that's how I got a hold of these two ID <gasps> cards. Are you sure these are gonna get us in? You're not gonna ask us any questions? No, correct, okay. Mundo, because the girls rotate from city to city, and the two who belong to these are in New Orleans right now. And all Ryan has to do is get into a costume and a mask, and no one will even notice him. Barnum and Bailey. Okay, Henry, unless you want to be responsible for the same thing happening to Shelley that happened to our grandfather, you'll tell me exactly what she's up to. That could be awkward. Either you do as I say, or I'll have your car surrounded by the cops. Now, you, Wendy, check in, locate Laney. I'll be along in a couple of minutes to help get her out of there. 
Uh, but you have to put on a costume or they'll finger you right away. Now we've established our M.O. You go in the front door, I'll go in the back. No, but you still need... Uh, I'll be suitably tired. San Francisco? How's the Ed? Beats me. Our Maddox is named Kenny. Right. Um, we're supposed to report to the manager. Get in your costume. Now, this is the Rod and Saddle Club. Hey, you were right. One of the girls you called us about showed up. One called Shelly. Now, Shelly Carr. Sure. We have lots of ways to keep her busy. Now, you point out Lainey Roberts. Good evening, ladies. Hello. I'm waiting for you to change into your outfits. So, you're the rotation from San Francisco. Yes, I'm Cleopatra, ready to offer all those Caesars new worlds to conquer. <laughs> and I'm the naughty cheerleader. We're supposed to report to the manager. Yes. That's me. That's something you should know, Cleo. I try out all the new girls personally before I ever let them near my customers. So what do you say, you and I, we go upstairs and you can show me around some of these new worlds? Uh, I just remembered, I forgot to pay the cab driver off. Uh-uh. Now you're gonna get your butt in that bar and hustle up some action. Michael here is gonna make sure you're kept real busy. You know, I think there just must be some mistake here because I was supposed to meet with a woman, Lainey Roberts. Oh, no, there's been no mistake. It's been reassigned. Is that a problem? Oh, goodness, no, there's no problem here. Might be going to her mother's. I mean, we're halfway to the county line. Sky watch to Groundhog. Surveillance car now on Canyon Road. Canyon Road. If you had any idea what this family put me through, Brutus. Henry! Um, yes, madam. Henry, where are they? Uh, they're um, inside, madam. I told you to stall them! They had very definite plans of their own, madam. Did they? Great, Henry. Excuse me, where is uh, Cleopatra? Sorry, ma'am. Cleopatra's busy right now. Take a seat in the pit. Okay, thanks. Dracula number three, your mistress of the dark is waiting in vain. Or should I say in vain? Dracula number three. My goodness, would you just look at this place? This is just so much nicer than San Francisco. Please tell me, is this a genuine Louis XIV or just a really super copy? Shut up and strip. Wendy, what's happening? I don't know. Everything's gone wrong. What? The guy right there. I don't recognize that suit. He didn't come through the front door. <laughs> oh, my God. The big guy at the door. He's pointing at you. He can't be talking to me now. Don't worry. I'll handle that. Oh, how are you going to handle that? Trust me. Which one? The guy with the black suit. Right there. You got a favorite color? Oh, how did you do that? But I meant the white suit. Yeah. 
Never mind. Stay in the front door. We're expecting company. Very important company. The main thing is we have to locate Lainey. Now, has Shelly done that? Lainey Roberts is gone, and the new manager took Shelly upstairs to try her out. Where are they? What's this? I'm here to find out why our office isn't getting its payoff. That's not my department. Well, I have time for a drink. Why don't you send the boss over? Turk. Hm. Well, that's an interesting and unusual name. Let's see, what is that? Turkish? Come on, the threads, darling. Do you lose them or do I peel them off? Well, aren't you the impatient one? Okay, okay, okay. I'm just going to get a little fresh air going in here. And then I'm going to do something with my lips that I bet none of the other women have ever done. Yeah? And what's that? This. for your chauffeur isn't gonna help you, sweetheart. He's being taken care of by the same people that told me you were coming. You wanna play hooker? Let's see how you play. What oh, hell? Get, off, hey. Get him off of me! Don't worry, Brutus wouldn't hurt a fly. It's not my fly I'm worried about. It's crushing my chest. Take your hands off. What's Buddhist doing here? Wendy? Oh, my God, Miss Carr, I'm so glad you're here. What's going on? Where are they? <laughs> the new manager. He took Shelly to try her out. Where's Lainey Roberts? I'm telling you, I don't know. Two cops came in here and took her away. Cops again, just like the night Jason died. Let's go, guys. I don't want anybody getting away. Yes, sir. Police are here. I'm gonna have to bust this whole damn place. <laughs> By yourself? I mean, there's some other people here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm with the DA's office. I'm gonna have to close this place down. Hey, I love the badge. I love that costume. But this is my Michael. All right, we'll take that. What is this, King? You know who I am. Tell them to let me go. <laughs> it's too bad you turned to prostitution. I bet the Johns really get off on this. Take her away. Ladies and gentlemen, this place is closed. All right, officers, move them out. Let's go, move them out. You climb down. I'll make a fast sweep of the office with the books. Brutus. So, you like to tear a women's clothes off? This is for Shelly. Sorry, ma'am. You'll have to come with me. Shelly, what are you doing what here? What are you doing here, Philip? Hi, Shelly. Did you get some good shots your face? Come on, let's go. Check every room. There he is. Hold it. Freeze. Let's go. All right, take down the door. Philip, there's someone inside that we have to help. But that isn't the... Got one more, gentlemen. One more. Release the gun or I'll blow your brains out. I'll give you the first shot, huh? Hey. Hope you like trains. <laughs> oh, nice work, Philip. I sat in jail all day, and the real hookers were out in an hour. Now, dearest, quite frankly, I am deeply hurt. How can you call me a thoughtless pig? 
I bought you a beautiful new dress for your arraignment. It's pink and you love pink. I want the keys. I want to drive. No, dearest, it was Andrea's idea to, to, to bring that newspaper report to the photographer. I had no idea you and that night truck were going to leave. Believe me, dear. I, I mean, I, I wish you could believe me. I wish what? I could believe you, too. Dearest, I'm telling you the truth. Henry's keys in the yard. Limo is still there unattended. I believe that means they have Henry and Jessica. Oh, my gosh. At least we know where they take unwanted baggage. No, not the morgue. That's when it's too late. But we do know there's somebody there who can tell us where they are before it's too late. You're sitting in the Carmelian. Did I tell you not to even think about this? The Carmelian was designed for desperate situations. You know, I've just lost all control. <laughs> really be getting paranoid if he thinks this car is dangerous. I really don't see what's so special about it. I wouldn't worry about that. He's the gatekeeper from the other side. A recently departed spirit is troubled. His murderers walked the earth as free men, and Vendar says that you were involved. I've heard you were screwy, but this is Looney Tunes time. Let me up! Vendar, he doesn't believe you. Infidel, do not test the patience of Vendar. What the hell is going on? Murder. Murder most foul. Why did you kill Jason Carr? This isn't real, is it? How shall I prove myself to you? Give me a blade. Find thy maker in hell! Stop! All right. You're as crazy as loons. What do you want from me? Where are they holding Jessica and Henry? And who ordered my grandfather murdered? Next stop. Top of the world. Hey! The inner circle will come to order. The session will begin with opening remarks from our leader. Get out of my chair, Bolingbroke. Remove him! Given the gravity of the task before us, I am going to dispense with my opening remarks and proceed directly to our consideration of the fates of Jessica Parr and Henry Bolingbrook. The two of you have been found guilty by this tribunal. Guilty of what? Guilty of trying to stop these fanatics of opening this city for their own special Henry. brand of, no, 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 of corruption and murder. But if this is the kind of city that you people stand for, I'm glad I shan't be around to see it. Their death sentences will be carried out immediately. Take them away. This meeting is adjourned. 
do you feel is the barrel of a 454 Magnum? Move it. What do you want? I think you and our friends for a special ride. Now let's see who you are. Well, 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 Mr. Mayor. My grandfather would have been so disappointed in you. Now where have you taken Jessica and Henry? Believe me, you won't find them. We'll see. These theatrics of yours are merely postponing the inevitable. Look! There's Jessica and Henry over there by the helicopter. What's gonna happen to us? We hear your good friend Alex Manning is lost at sea. Thought you might like to look for him. Come on, come on, move it. Get into the bird. Hold on, Lieutenant. There's been a change of plan. Why is that? Is there a problem, Mayor? No, no problem. No, you don't. Study. They're gaining. Uh, I do think it's odd that Grandpa would place so much stock in a car they can't even outrun a police car. Odd describes your grandfather very well. He was no fool, Henry. Which is all yours. Perhaps not. But the man in the car behind us has a gun sticking right out of the window. Everybody down low. My God, what's that? Like some kind of alarm system. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. Look! We are under Oh, my Please God. remain calm. I will be acting as your defensive coordinator. Working with me is our electronic sensor known as ISIC. ISIC has determined that the assault is from the rear. Please select from the following options. We are under attack from, one, a police exercise unit, two, a National Rifle Association rally, or three, a hostile force. Definitely the latter. Come on, select. Oh, okay. Thank you. You may now assist in your defense by providing the following information. The hostile forces are 100 yards behind, more, less. What do you think? Less, less, less! Less. By the time you finish the quiz, you're dead. Thank you. We will now begin evasive tactics. Please tighten your safety belts. There's a chop right above. You may now assist in your own defense by entering the following terrain options. Heavy woods, dense foliage, possible tunnels, other. There's a tunnel up ahead. Punch it into the computer. <laughs> They're heading towards the tunnel. Get the chopper to cut them off on the other side. I bet we're really gonna fly now. Ryan, why are you stopping? I'm not doing a thing. It's stopping by itself. Please direct your attention back to the screen and choose from the following colors. Red, white, silver, Shh. other. Any preference? Well, actually, I Just push anything! Yes, fine. What's it doing? The car's red. Hang on. We're out of here. Now we're gonna make some time. Hey, didn't that look like... Silver. We're following Silver. That was red. You're right. How the hell did you let him by you? Nobody got by us and nothing came out of that tunnel. Nothing came out the other side except... 
Bingo! Minute. Let's go! Come on, take it up! Henry, you've got to admit, you misjudged Granddaddy's car. It's just wonderful, especially for a woman who's always changing her mind. Well, the important thing is we're safe. I can't wait to blow the whistle on the mayor and his whole lot. You spoke too soon. No fiber optic paint job's gonna stop those guys. We've had it. We are now under attack from above as well as behind. The defense coordinator recommends you consider going on the offensive. It's always preferable to turn the other cheek. Get those rotten funny blaggers before they get us! Well, thank you. This is your offensive coordinator taking over and taking it to him. All forces online. Isaac, are you ready? Prepare tracking data. Victory instrument for protection or retribution. Known affectionately as Viper. Come on up. I hate to think what happens next. There's something alive back here. Jason Carr was a genius. That may not help us. Oh, what is he trying to do? They're trying to cut us off. Fire, come on! What the hell is that car made out of anyway? Tracking. 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 We have a lock. Fire with ready. Oh, what the hell was that? Hey, hey, help. Oh, pull me up. I got you. Come on. Come on, get him. Keep firing. We've got to stop that thing. Get all that, Eddie. Ah! That ought to make him give up. I hope so. Let's get the hell out of here. Ryan, get this car out of here! It won't move. Oh, and with more company. My God! They blew number 10 away! If that doesn't stop them, nothing will. It's us or them. Well, it looks like it's us, because they're smart. They're pulling out. Break out the assault weapon! Tracking. Tracking. They've stepped it up. It was a lot more than a machine gun. I don't even like machine guns. Tracking. Tracking. We can't take many more of those. Give me that. Come on, come on. We have a lock. Fire when ready. I'd say we owe our lives to Jason. Not to mention his little creatures. Thanks, fellas. special banner edition of the Los Angeles Post has broken the story of the year. I am standing literally yards away from Mayor Monroe's burned helicopter. Mayor Monroe is alleged to have been the head of a criminal conspiracy called the Inner Circle, brought down by uh, Captain Chameleon and the Paraclete of Justice. Yes, they said it, folks. The Post, not us. With a special byline report by Wendy Lyons. Oh, my God! Oh, hi, Wendy, way to go! All right, isn't it great, Miss Rogers? <laughs> Um, maybe we should move the party across the street? I can't believe the ungrateful little wench didn't even mention my name. Your name? Did you hear Stan say anything about crusading the Los Angeles Post editor Philip Branscombe anywhere? That's it. I want her fired. 
Philip. Fire the reporter who just broke the hottest story of the year. <laughs> Aunt Andrew, why don't you go do something useful for this paper, huh? Why don't you go get Wendy a cup of coffee? Tea, madam? Yes, please. Isn't he majestic? Three times the champion of the whole world. Yes, madam. Obviously in the same league as Schweitzer and Salk. That's all right. And check out that tan. Hi. You looked good out there. Oh, for me, that's freedom, pure and simple. It'd be tough giving that up. So why not hang on to it? What do you mean? Well, it seems to me that between you and me and Jessica, we have the makings of a super team. <clears throat> oh, and uh, Henry, of course. Thank you, madam. You're welcome. I had a reason for going after your grandfather's killers. Jason was my friend. It might not be the same next time. I think it would. I think I know you. We're soulmates. We've been through a lot of rough times in our lives. Your prison experiences, for instance. You're playing games against Shelley. What's this? Another one of your roles? The prisoner? You can't tell me you know what it was like. Honey, a lock is a lock. A door's a door. It's all the same thing. Our place was a cage. Living death. You boiled all day, froze all night. One time, our air conditioner went out for a couple of hours. I slept in a cell so small, you can never straighten out your spine. OK, our laundry went on strike. We slept on the same sheets for a week. The guards, they used to get drunk at night, wake us up, torture us, just for the fun of it. Oh, well, once some of the girls were accused of sniffing their nail polish, the staff came in and took it away from us. Must have been dehumanizing. I came through it, though. So what do you say? Hey, you're forgetting. I'm a fugitive, not too smart going into competition with the police. What if I could make it worth your while? Like getting that fugitive warrant quashed for good? You're not in on this, too. Why not? Think about it. Someone who operates in areas that are beyond the power of the law or the press. And you can still carry out your pledge to Mr. Carr. What do you say? Care to make your bed with us? A person would have to be crazy. No doubt about it. Thank you.